Since its release, Genshin Impact has seen many quality of life changes to improve the player experience. However, aren't there some features that you'd still like to see? Hey, what is going on guys? It's Jonity and welcome to another Genshin Impact video. In today's video, let's go over a couple changes that could help improve Genshin. Just to be clear as well, these changes are from my personal opinion and what I'd like to see in the near future, not changes that are confirmed. These changes will overall be beneficial for players and make the gameplay experience better. This will be part 2 of our changes series, so we'll be adding to the list and for you guys to reference friends, here are the changes that we already mentioned. Additionally, if you are interested in checking out those changes with more details, then we'll be sure to link the video in the description box below as well. Now without any further ado, let's jump right into it! As a traveler and adventurer for the Adventurers Guild, dispatching characters on an expedition is going to be one of the best ways to earn free resources. Each location has different materials offered, and by selecting on the one you want, you'll be able to dispatch a character for 4, 8, 12, or 20 hours and gain rewards over time. The longer characters are dispatched, the more rewards that the player will be able to obtain. In most cases, players will generally go for the 20 hour duration, which means they'll generally check in once a day to claim the rewards and set up the expedition once again. While it doesn't take a tremendous amount of time to set up, the system could overall be improved by adding an option to re-dispatch. Located somewhere on the expedition page could be a button that allows players to re-dispatch their completed expedition with the previous settings. This will overall save a bit of time of having to select individual characters again and make the system a bit more efficient since most players will probably select the same options as their previous expedition. Expedition. And hey, if you want to change it up, then players will of course be able to do so manually. Every morning, I wake up to redispatch my characters and kind of just thought, geez, we wish there was a magic button to set it all up again. Since we're on the topic of saving time, let's talk about Condensed Resin next. Condensed Resin was released in version 1.1, and the goal of it was meant for players to earn double the rewards with double the amount of resin, ultimately leading players to save time. This feature was later improved by increasing the Condensed Resin limit count from 3 to 5 in version 1.4. This was a really good change because it generally means that players were able to spend their resin in one sitting rather than logging in twice. Condensed Resin overall was just a good addition because it basically cuts the amount of time that we have to spend inside domains and ley lines in half and because of it, nearly everyone will craft it. However, there is one thing about Condensed Resin that kind of contradicts its functionality and that is Crystal Cores. To craft a condensed resin, 40 resin is required along with one crystal core. You can obtain a crystal core from crystal flies, which are scattered all across Tavat. Whether it's an animal crystal fly, geo crystal fly, electro crystal fly, or dendro crystal fly, it will all provide a crystal core, and because of the cost to craft a condensed resin, players will want to stock up on them. By now, I think it's fair to say that the requirement of needing crystal cores for condensed resin can be removed. While the idea was nice at first to get players to travel around and spot crystal flies, after a while, it can become a daily in itself to restock. The main idea of condensed resin is again meant to save players time, but having to collect crystal cores in itself will also take up time. Granted, they are pretty easy to collect and it'll only get easier as more regions are released since all different types of crystal flies provide crystal cores, but the idea of spending time to save time just contradicts itself and shouldn't feel like a chore that players have to do to benefit from the system of condensed resin. Since Genshin is a very story driven game, some way or another, you're gonna start some type of story quest, even if you're not ready. Trying to do some quick daily commissions? Well, you triggered a character quest. Trying to explore the big open world? Well, you triggered an Archon quest. This could be a little problematic if players aren't ready to experience the story yet or don't have the time to go through the opening cutscene. Which is why we think it'd be nice to add these little yellow aura thingies that require the player to interact with it before triggering the cutscene. 
The yellow auras already exist in game, so adding them to start story quests shouldn't be an issue and potentially help eliminate running into the problem where a character is busy with another quest. Because most of the time, when you go into the opening cutscene, that triggers certain characters or locations to be occupied, which is a little annoying. Now, if you trigger the quest on your own accord but didn't finish it, then there's not much to be done there because, uh, <laughs> you chose to start it. This change would overall make story quests cleaner since it can get pretty messy at times if you don't finish the quest completely. Being able to choose when you want to start questing will be a more enjoyable experience for players because if you ever triggered a quest by accident and weren't ready, later on, you could forget what happened when trying to complete it. And since there isn't a cutscene theater of any kind, which is a change we suggest in the first video, then it would suck. Now, we originally thought about removing the story keys that are obtained for completing 8 daily commissions because players are probably unlocking character quests even when they don't want to start it yet to maximize on keys and have everything unlocked for when they are ready. However, this wouldn't resolve the issue for Archon quests since these quests do not rely on story keys. Also, we can understand Hoyverse not watching players to complete all the character quests in a single day. Similar to how after you unlock hangouts and can choose when to begin, the same option should be provided for story quests as well. You can argue that it can have the same start window as hangouts too, but the shiny yellow aura thingies sound uh, pretty cool. As the MC, the Traveler has the ability to resonate with the Statue of the Seven to change elements depending on which region they are located. To resonate with a different element, the player will need to have the Traveler active in the party and interact with the Statue of the Seven and the option to resonate with the element would be available. Across your adventure though, there might be times when you need to change elements but might not necessarily need the Traveler in the party, maybe using them for the Abyss or something. This might be a bit of an inconvenience because you'll need to change your party to include the Traveler and then maybe swap back to your previous party or even have to create a new party just to have the Traveler in it. The issue could be resolved though by allowing players to resonate with the Statue of the Seven directly even if the Traveler is not in the party by having the traveler appear when clicking on the option to resonate. Similar to how your active character sometimes changes to the traveler during certain conversations because that certain event is more direct towards the MC. The same would apply by clicking on the resonate with element at the statue of the seven. The traveler would swap in and change elements without being included in the party, saving some time and the inconvenience of swapping. Lastly, we actually have an add-on to one of our previous changes from part one towards the training dummy. The idea of the training dummy was to test out your rotation and damage on an immobile target without any interference or limitation of HP inside the Serenity pot. With this next change, we wanted to add more details like a battle analysis and provide valuable information to help players determine how much damage a party is doing. The analysis would appear once the training dummy is hit and it will display the party members along with their damage dealt. Additionally, there will also be a details tab to expand the window and have more in-depth data such as how much damage normal attacks, elemental skill, and elemental burst did for each character. Something to note though is that when a character triggers an elemental reaction, whichever ability used to trigger it will have the damage added to its value. Not every single character is going to have a main role as a DPS though, so there will also be other users useful information included such as how much healing they provided for the party. Messed up on your rotation and want to redo? No problem, because an option to refresh the data will be available so players can restart as many times as they want. Now if you have other business inside the surrounded teapot then the battle analysis could be in the way, so we include a X button to close the menu as well. If you want to reopen it, simply approach the training dummy and bonk it again. One of the hardest challenges that Genshin Impact offers is the Spiral Abyss because inside the Abyss, Travis will face many adversaries that are high level and have a bunch of HP. The Spiral Abyss is one of the best ways to earn Primo Gems and to help players have a better chance at clearing it, the data from the battle analysis could make it more apparent on what the issue may be. Most games nowadays do include a battle analysis or DPS meter of some sorts because data is the best way to figure out what's working and what isn't working. Just ask Hoyaverse, they do surveys for each version update every single time. Let me know what you guys think about these changes and which one you'd be excited for if they were to be implemented. You can also pick one from the previous video as well or change that you'd like to see that wasn't mentioned. 
While Genshin Impact is a fantastic game, there are definitely changes that could make it even better and something that we as players should strive for. I'm curious to hear what you guys think, so do tell in the comment section below. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for tuning in. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to smash the like and subscribe button. Don't forget to also turn that notification bell so you don't miss on any new release videos. I've been Johnny D, and until next time, I'll catch you guys in the next one.